James is personally my favorite Thomas character, and has been since I was a kid. He's often arrogant, and might not be the nicest of the cast, but regardless of that, still managed to stick out to me, and honestly it's hard not to. His bright red livery combined with that attitude really helped to make James unique, and as such as a character that I've always enjoyed and in some ways related to. Kinda this pissed it took 5 episodes to get to my favorite character, bullshit. but at least we're here now, so without further ado, let's get into the history behind James the Red Engine and all of his models. Starting off, the reference first model of James was a 260 Glasgow and Southwestern Railway locomotive, better known as the Austrian Goods, designed by Peter Drummond. The Reverend, however, would reject this prototype, on the grounds that it would make more sense that James was English, and as such, Audrey's second model of James would be based on a 1960s trying Johnson 3F, a conversion which Warby themselves would actually use for their version of James. A Gage 1 model of James was built and first shown in Season 1, and like the others, is a custom build with a Perspex body shell, also using a Marklin locomotive as a donor for the chassis and various other parts. He was painted with automotive paint and lined with automotive pinstripe tape. The numbers on his tender were custom cut vinyl stickers, and the model itself will be powered with an AC motor, as this is how most Marklin locomotives came. During a refurbishment period, however, his AC motor will be replaced with a DC motor, allowing for easier running and better maintenance. During the production of the 10th season, two new brass models would be made of James, as at this point his original model was 22 years old. Not only that, but the show would fall under tight filming schedules, thus meaning there was very little time for emergency repairs, but with the inclusion of the new models, the crew would have a little bit more to work with. Besides being made out of brass, the models were also given a CNC aluminum chassis, powered by a DC motor. From this point onwards, the Perspex model would only appear in scenes that would damage the brass models. When James was repainted yellow and black in the green controller, his original Perspex model would be used to not ruin a freshly painted brass model, but oddly enough the original Perspex tender was not repainted, and will be paired with a brass front half. However, behind the scenes images do show that there was a brass tender painted like this at some point, oddly enough. 19 different facial expressions were sculpted for James, and like the others these were all originally sculpted in clay. However, resin casts would be made of a silicone mold, and many of the faces would be duplicated, just in case the crew needed one to be dirty and one to be clean on the same day of shooting. Thankfully, two of these faces are now owned by Twitter user Thomas Tang Merch. During the first season, it wasn't uncommon to see Edward wearing one of James's faces, providing these infinitely funny pictures, and currently one of his brass models is on display at the Hara Model Railway Museum. The other brass model would be sold, however, all to an unknown buyer after being sold to the prop gallery. The model at Hara is the same model that had previously been on display at Nitrogen Studios, thankfully not in some random bloke's garage. The original Perspex model, however, just like two of his faces, is also owned by Thomas Tank Merch. A Gage 3 model of James was also built for the 10th season, made to be used alongside the large-scale models of the Scarlowy railway engines, and like his smaller models was made of brass with a CNC aluminum chassis. The model itself was actually track-powered, so metal contacts would be attached to his metal wheels, which ran the power into the motor, and just like Thomas, he would feature a smoke unit. Eight different facial expressions would be sculpted for the model, and the same model will be used in the 11th season and The Great Discovery. Much like most of the other engines, James had a close-up model built for scenes where he had to interact with the human models, but James wasn't built as a complete engine, featuring only a cab, tinder, and parts of his boiler and firebox. It would also be used for close-up whistle shots and would emit smoke from the whistle when needed. During the production of Old Iron, James lacked a front buffer beam, and as such, Thomas's close-up model was then used to represent James. A somewhat life-size model of James was made for Thomas and the Magic Railroad, as in one of the scenes Junior was supposed to be flung onto James from Diesel 10, and as such a large-scale version of James's cab and boiler were built for the scene. As shown here, the scene was filmed with the green screen method, so the model and background are all green, rather than being detailed. As we all know, in 2009, the show would switch from live action to CGI, thus meaning that James's models were no longer needed. James would be recreated from scratch in CGI by Nitrogen Studios, and in a lot of ways would change from his original model, featuring an increase in size and making his funnel and cab the same height as Henry's. Despite this though, I would still argue that James is one of the better CGI renditions, but he is my favorite so I am a bit biased. As most of you know, James is not likely to appear in season 25, which honestly is going to make it a lot harder for me to watch, that is saying I put myself through that. I plan to watch a little bit of it for content, but probably nothing after that, and this really does not help its case. Regardless of that though, James still remains as my personal favorite, and no matter how you crack it, there's loads of episodes and content that still exist that will not only keep this character, but all the other characters that aren't returning alive. So I'm not really that worried about it. More disappointed. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you're a fan of James, be sure to keep your eye out, as soon I plan to start a new James model project. Wink wink. And if you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe, as there's plenty more to come. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.